Let's get into it. Marquette, Devon, Burton, the saint and the sinner, giving you lessons from a PM. Today, saints, we are talking about, is the man really the provider? Huh? Is that really the case? Shout out to Kareem Glows for starting off with the super chats, and I really appreciate it. And it's a beautiful thing to show love to those who show love to you. So shout out to Kareem. We're going to get into this game. And remember, when you're asking your questions, if your question is not answered, do not keep on repeating it in the chat. Either you super chat it or you don't, because we try to take seriously the people who take their questions seriously. We can't read a thousand questions. So that's how we're prioritizing. Now let's get to this game. You hear so many people, primarily women, say the man should be the provider. Yeah, the man should provide everything. I should get a free ride in a fancy car courtesy of you. Oh, yeah, I'm going to work. And you're going to work. But we're going to spend your money. Well, gee, say, uh, why is that? Now, let's think back. They say the male is the provider. And I'm always one who's interested in going to the root of things. Jay Maximus, thank you for the super chat, saying, when we are young, our parents provide for us because they brought us into this world. So theoretically, it's their responsibility to provide for us because they created us. So they are merely providing for that which they created. So when you are a child, your parents provide because they birthed you, maybe. And theoretically, this is your mom and dad providing for you in the way of food, capital, emotion, love. Okay, cool. All right. So when you reach maturity, you move out of your parents' home, whether you're a male or a female, when you're living on your own, at that point, theoretically, you should be providing for yourself. Okay. All right. So you're providing for yourself. Cool. And I often, I, I really want to define this word provider. Does provider only have to be money? Do we not perish without the other things that are critical to being a happy, healthy human being? Love? emotional support, guidance, wisdom, leadership. Are those things not important? I say that they are important because when people are, are lacking love, they feel unloved, they feel without purpose. Well, they become depressed and sometimes suicidal. It can lead to death. Huh? Those are critical things to provide. But here's the thing. When you become an adult and you move out of your parents' home and you live on your own, okay, Provider for yourself. Okay. So now when you get in a relationship as a woman, now all of a sudden, actually it's going even before relationship. When you start dating as a woman, you're expecting the man to provide everything. He got to pay for everything. Why is that? You've been living in as an adult female. You're an independent woman. You're working. You got a job. You're earning income. Why is it you want the male to provide when you're dating? Well, I don't, I don't think it's for any greater purpose other than to save money, right? Don't we all like to save money? I don't think it's for any greater noble purpose other than you're a bum bitch and you don't have a lot of money, so you'd rather use somebody else's money. I don't think it's for any other reason than you're a selfish whore and you'd rather preserve your capital and use someone else's. And let me tell you why I say that. If a man invites you out on a first date, I think it's reasonable for the man to cover the check. It's reasonable, not necessary. And the reason that it is reasonable is because the male is a bigger animal. You as a female are a smaller animal. At some level, you are taking a risk to go out with him. You're also giving him an opportunity to get to know you. And the truth is, with regards to this male-female thing, the male is the pursuer. So you are giving him an opportunity to pursue you, and he is paying for that opportunity. Fine, fine paying for it in time, emotional, capital, all these different things. Okay, cool. JD Trey Zero Curry, appreciate the super chat. So he's paying for that first opportunity because you're taking risks. You don't know who he is. So on the first day, he presents himself. You come to know this man and say, wow, you are a great man and I am interested. At the point in which the mutual interest is confirmed, then there is no reason for him to be treating you as though you are a child without income. There is no reason for him to be paying for everything as though you have no financial source yourself. Huh? Bitch got a job. Bitch don't want to spend a penny. That's amazing. 
Now, that's the dating scenario. Starts off first date. It's reasonable for the man to pay, but there's nothing wrong with a woman offering to contribute. Now, remember, anytime someone pays for something, they expect something in return. You dig? So if I sent my daughter out, which I probably wouldn't, but if I had a daughter and I sent her out, I say, bitch, you go ahead and pay for your shit. You pay for your shit because motherfuckers have your ass out on that date paying for that filet mignon, you dig? Paying for that Kobe beef and all that shit. Oh, he going to want a little bit of get back. He going to want some ROI on that money. So, bitch, go ahead, pay for your shit. So, after the first date, the man pays for it because he's getting that opportunity to get to know that woman, to present himself. And she's going out with a bigger animal at some level, putting herself at risk. Um, and we know that the male is the pursuer. So women have more incoming interests than men do. So men are at some level financing their opportunity. Fine, fine. I'm a business guy. I get that. But on the second date, bitch, when you have verified that you're interested in the guy and there's mutual interest, well, now it's okay for you to contribute. I'm not saying you need to go Dutch. Okay. Now I haven't dated in the way that squares date in forever. So I don't even know what that's like. I'm not going to lie to you. But let's go ahead and get into relationship now, huh? In a relationship, let me tell you how mine really go in real life. You dig? In real life, if my female sees a, a play a flight deal come through or she knows she wants to go on a holiday and she says, and this is real life, because you know I travel more than anybody. My female will say, hey, Quet, I want to go to Brazil. I'll be like, cool, book it. She'll be like, right, for sure. Hop on the computer. Boom, 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 boom. She books her ticket. She books my ticket. She books the hotel for us. You dig? And I don't turn around and say, oh, how much do I owe you? No. I don't owe you shit. Why? Because once you say that you're in with somebody, you're in with them. And if my female is getting her a good income and I'm getting me a good income, we don't need to go halfsies. We don't need to go Dutch. Whoever is making the purchase makes the purchase. Why? Because the money doesn't matter. If I went to my female and said, empty out 100% of your bank account today and put that shit in my hand, guess what she's going to go do? She's going to go empty out that goddamn account and put it in my hand. Why? Because I am 100% the unquestioned leader. Now, she might make an inquiry. What are you thinking? You, you got a move we about to make? We about to make a play? We about to go get a new whip? We moving out the country? What we doing? She might have a couple questions. But if I say I'm not answering any of your goddamn questions, guess what? She going to zip it. Huh? Now, I'm a reasonable man, so I'm always happy to, to chat. And whether she agrees or disagrees, I get the final word, and we both know that. That's leadership. Now, let me give you a lecture. Huh? You guys are over here concerned with being a provider when in reality, you must be a leader. You might not always be the provider, but you always have to be the leader. I've always been the leader. Let me tell you about when I couldn't provide. Because some of you guys look at me and say, well, damn, bruh, you got the bread. You could spend out the bread. So you talking from a different position. Let me tell you about a good woman and how she puts you and keeps you in that leadership position. You heard me? When she recognizes who you are. For example, as you know, I've opened offices around the world for my corporation. I had an office in Puerto Rico. We were hit with two consecutive Category 5 hurricanes. I lost a tremendous amount of money, tremendous. And I lost personal and business assets. When I moved back to the US, I was at, z I was past zero dollars. Now I was in negative dollars, you hear me? And I had a female that I moved in with into her house. She provided everything. I provided nothing in the way of financial capital, but I was still sitting at the head of the table. My word was still law, huh? That's one female. Transition to a different female. Another time I had no capital. Let me tell you how trill this female is. We would go out to eat. She would give me her credit card so I can accept the check, put the card in, and I would sign even though it's her card. Let me tell you how trill she is. She would give me the cash. I make the purchases and she thanks me for taking her out to dinner. That's trill. You hear me? That's a woman who says, daddy, you the big dog, and I ain't going to let you look like nothing else. Daddy, you the big dog, and I'm going to make sure that everybody know you the big dog, that you running things. So here's, here's the situation. If your woman makes more money than you, oh, it don't matter. It don't matter because you're the leader. 
Her money is your money. Because everything is yours. You's a fat fucking king. Now, the key is to not be a tyrant. The key is to be a wise steward of the money. And we're going to get to all this work. Kareem writes, a woman once told me that she's looking for a male that will provide financially or she's not interested, but she lives with her mom. Still, she's 28. Yeah, that's a dumb, lazy bitch. And these bitches need a provider because they're trying to extract from you. What you're really dealing with is a long-term trick prostitute relationship. That's why you got to come to the pimping to understand what leadership is. Because the pimping is the complete opposite of how the beta male provider lives, which is you're paying for the woman to exist, which is ironic because if you lose your money, you lose your bitch because the only financial, the only value you've offered her is financial. Huh? So she don't value you for you. Huh? And a lot of these squares who are saying, yeah, you got to be the provider. The reason they say that is because now that they're in maturity and they're earning an income, now they can use money to get the women they've always wanted, the bad bitches. But here's the thing about a bad bitch. She might look good on the outside, but she's only with you for the money. And you're a nerd, you're a square, you made a bunch of money in Microsoft or working high up at P&G or some Fortune 500 company, and you've been a nerd your whole life. Now you got a fine ass bitch. And that's because you're a provider. And now you want to preach the gospel of being a beta male provider because it's helped you get to where you think you are. But what you don't realize is that that female that you have who you love so much she didn't already been in my house when she was younger, when she was in her prime, when she was 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, when that pussy was fresh water. And now you got her, but you got second hands. You got sloppy seconds, you dig? And she has no real value. And here's the thing. She's always going to thirst for a real savage like your boy. huh? So you nerd, you pay for all her shit. And she go on the side, come back and slide through my way, you dig? You can never trust her because she done been dealt with by too many Gs. And now she dealing with you and you ain't measuring up. You heard me? And I ain't just talking about below the belt. I'm talking about mentally as well. Understand me. Now, me, when I get me a female, I don't want a bad bitch. Bad bitches, those are side bitches to a real one. Why? Because when you want a bad bitch, you're trying to impress other people. Huh? You want to walk around and you want people to look at you like, oh, yeah, he's the man. He got a bad bitch. But here's the thing. I didn't have bad bitches my whole life. In fact, I had a bitch so bad. I was walking around Vegas a couple of weeks ago. This is my side bitch. I was walking around Vegas and uh, uh, some young niggas was behind me was like, damn, he got one. I turned around like you're damn skippy. I got a couple. You heard me? And that super player, when you could tell your bitch that you got other bitches, but let's stay focused, all right? The reason people want a bad bitch is because they have low self-esteem. They need validation from others. But your main bitch, she don't need to be a bad bitch. I'd rather have that bitch who was a nerd in high school. I'd rather have that bitch who had her legs closed in high school. Yeah, I ain't give a fuck if she got a lazy eye as long as she could follow directions and she could keep her good eye on the prize. You dig? That's what I'd rather have, a bitch who can follow directions, who's respectful, who can add value. Now, you don't need to be a provider because if you have money and your woman have money, the truth is the money doesn't matter. As I said, when my girl want to go on a trip, I tell her to book it. She use her money, don't ask me for shit. The only time a female asks me for any amount of money is if she does a business task for me and like, for example, I have my host, I say, we didn't just sold out assassin hats, which is a fact. If you wanted assassin hat, your dumb ass then missed out. And you know, when I do shit, I do one run. Now, if you want assassin shirt, you can still get one. www.thesassin.com slash merch or go to thesassin.com. You can still get the shirt. When that shit sell out, don't ask me about it. But when my girls go to the post office and mail my shit off, they say, hey, Marquette, can you cash out me fill in the blank amount for shipping? If I said no, they'd say, okay. But they ask me that because they know I charge someone else to pay for the shipping. So they're just getting reimbursed. They gave the service completely free of cost. That's the only time because that's a business expense. Now, that's boss shit. Because the thing is, as I'm going to keep reiterating to you, when you love someone and when you're really in deep with someone and you know a woman is down, she's trill, you would give her anything. Cause you know, she would give you anything like Bridget would do anything I ask her to do. So if Bridget need anything, she could get anything. And she knows that I'm always going to take care of her. So we're taking care of each other. It doesn't matter whose bank account the money comes out of, right? It doesn't matter. Cause at the end of the day, number one, it's all my money. It's all mine. Number one. 
And number two, she knows that I'm always take care of her, not on the financial provider side, on all of the sides. But here's the flip side. She's going to take care of me, not on the financial side only, on all of the sides. Whatever I need, she's going to get it done. That's a real bitch. Now, here's the thing. A lot of guys get, get scared of the, oh, I don't want to be a provider because they ain't got guap. So they're operating from a position of weakness. But I tell you, I don't want to be a provider just because that doesn't look right on the pimping. Huh? I let the tricks provide. Nah, I'm not going to be a provider. I take care of my peoples just the same way when I invite a woman out on a first date, I'll cover it. Because number one, if I invite you out as a female, I invite you out to a restaurant I want to go to, which is either a hood ass Mexican restaurant or a hood ass jerk chicken Jamaican restaurant, or it's a fucking top of the line restaurant. You heard me? And we paying three, four hundred dollars a plate. And I'm not going to assume that you got guap to peel off like that, bitch. I ain't going to put you in that position. So I'm going to pay the check. Same thing. I invite guys out. I generally will pay the check if I invited you out. You heard me? And you can ask some of the saints whom I've invited out and I always cover the check. And shout out to Jabri who covered the check last time we were out at, at dinner. So that's number one. When you have a relationship with people, there's no such thing as who the provider is. We're all, we all going to show love to our people. But the problem lies in when a bitch wants to say, oh, I'm not spending any money and you're spending all of the money. Some of you whores try to go to a religious explanation of why, um, yeah, well, in the Bible, it says you need to be a provider. Okay, well, look here. Uh, do you follow everything in the Bible? Let me know. Well, 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 look here. Have you even read the whole Bible? If you've read the whole Bible and you follow the Bible, then you know you should probably be a virgin and you shouldn't be passing out the vagina like Costco samples. But regardless, you're giving it out, ain't you? So you want to follow the one thing in the Bible that benefits your dumb ass financially, but you don't want to follow the commandment in the Bible not to consume pork. Follow the commandment in the Bible to cover your hair. Follow all the other rules of the Bible. Huh? Okay, I got you, bitch. You're a scam artist. That's what you are. And you're trying to pimp out the religion. And then you got the Muslim chicks who say, yeah, the man is supposed to be the provider. Oh, yeah, fantastic. Well, the Quran also says that you should never be out in the public alone. Yes, you, you can't even walk in the public alone. You have to be represented by a man at all times or with a large group of women. Yeah. Do you follow that? No, you don't, bitch. The Quran also says that you should not be engaging in sexual activity. The Quran says you should not be alone with a man that you're not related to or a man that's not your husband. Do you follow that? No, you don't, bitch. Yeah, the Quran says all kind of things that you don't follow, bitch. So the Quran says you shot them titties covered up, bitch. Now, why you got them titties all out, huh? So why is it that you want to follow these little parts that benefit you financially? It's because you're a liar with no principles and no morals. And you're trying to extract money from me. And it won't happen. No, bitch. Not today. Not yesterday. Not tomorrow. And so, saints, when a woman comes to you talking about she needs a provider, these are broke whores. These are women with no money. That's why they want your money. Now, when you're dealing with a woman who has her own money, then you're not going to encounter this as much unless you're dealing with a woman who's come from poverty. That woman who came from poverty has a lot of issues shaking that fear and poverty mindset. So she becomes greedy and wants to, wants to get some of these greenbacks from your ass. You hear me? She wants to hoard away the money. And you know a woman's thinking about herself, herself only when she wants your money. You'll know a woman loves you when she views your money as her money. So she thinks if you're losing money, she's losing money. You know a woman loves you when she views her money as your money, right? So she knows that anything she has, she wants to make an offering to you so that you can achieve your goals. To provide is to provide sustenance, right? To provide capital, to provide food, to provide shelter. Now, if we're talking about cavemen, the cave is already provided by nature. So we're really talking about providing food, right? <laughs> so we can survive. Now, in the Paleolithic age or in the era of the cavemen, you have the hunter-gatherer. And most of the time, we say that the hunter is the male, the gatherer is the female. They're both providing. Got him. Hey, bitch. Got him. Hey, bitch. Got him. If we have hunter-gatherer, the male and the female are both providing food. So 
why all of a sudden in the modern era, only the man is providing for the sustenance, the food, the, the capital? Huh? Why did things change all of a sudden? Further, there has been scientific research, archaeological evidence that has indicated as we are often buried with our possessions, you have women being buried with hunting tools, hunting implements. That clearly shows that some women were also actually hunters, not only men, as you may have been taught traditionally. So you have male and female were hunters. Huh? Now, Regardless of what the percentages are, what is 100% clear is that both the male and female were indeed providers. So when we come to this era, there's no need for that to change. Further, let me indicate that the male is the unquestioned leader. So what you need to understand as a man, you needn't be concerned with being the provider. You must always be obsessed with being the leader because that's what you actually are by nature. How do we know that? Taking it back to the Paleolithic age, when you have human beings with less developed brains, the early hominids, the size will allow you to dominate because you're not outthinking people way back thousands of years ago, right? You're just dominating physically, which shows that the male is naturally oriented to be the leader. So you should always be the leader, whether you have bread or no bread, and take the lesson from a pimp. Bitch, and let that taste like dick in your mouth for your hating bitches on there. Take this lesson from a pimp that a man need not be the provider. He needs to be the leader and the manager, huh? Now, if you're so independent and you're so developed as a woman, you such a strong woman, your ass can't make a dollar? Yo ass can't spend a dollar? Let's be real here further. If you're a sincere person, male or female, you're going to want to take care of your people. The way I look at these videos and I'm perplexed as to how I live stream to 400 people for free and they can't even click the like button. I'm like, damn, I don't teach people that. I teach that every man should pay what he owes. And we've all been broke before. So if you can't send a $2 super chat, you can't click the like. Like, damn, that's what it's come to. I mean, goddamn. I take my valuable time out. You can't click the like for your boy. You can't share a video for your boy. And it's not for me. It's so that we can spread this gospel. You heard me? Pharrell, Barry writes, I'm just trying to learn, OG. Truly appreciate that. Thank you for the support and stepping up, being counted as a man. Emilio, the armor one, is back. Appreciate it. Saint writes, knowledge is not power. Action is power. You ain't never lied. Action is power. Shout out to Mr. Man in Action, by the way. Great moderator. I truly appreciate your, your support and your work. Um, and I'm sure all the saints do. Joshua, Joshua Jamprom, always back writes, pay what you owe. Truly appreciate that. And when I say that, saints, I don't mean that just in one situation. I mean that globally, pay what you owe, which is that you always should know that when someone gives you something you owe, you might not owe money, you might owe time, you might owe support, you know, you might owe something. Like as a man, you don't try to live for free. That's not what men do. Now, women yeah, they can live for free because they can often find a trick or a beta male provider who will let them get a free ride in a fancy car. Me personally, I got a fancy car, but I ain't giving free rides. You better believe that. You heard me? If you're going to sit in the back of the rolls with a boss, trust me, you earn that. Believe that. I'm taxing hoes. Yeah. Kyle L. writes, peace to the saints. Peace to the saints. And we have saints all around the world. This movement is crazy. I'm excited to see you all January 30th and 31st for the conference next month in January. We got saints coming from Denmark. Uh, about 30 tickets left, so get your, your ticket. Not confident I'm going to ever do it again. Um, so we shall enjoy this one. CB2 sends in the Euros, writes, how to communicate calmly and clearly when you're in a discussion or emotional? Very good question. And this is something that will come up frequently in life. To be calm and have presence of mind is the most important thing you can do. And especially if you're media trained, you know this, to speak with a smile on. You see that I'm smiling while I'm talking. That's media training, right? That means that you have been prepped either by political handlers or media to know how to convey yourself in front of a camera. And when you do anything, you should do it like you're doing it for TV. So even when you're dealing with a woman, 
You got to keep it player. One thing that I use to never cut off the female when she's talking, because the person who's the deeper listener is always in the stronger position because you come to an understanding of what the person's trying to convey. And further, you can get them to better understand you when you finally do speak because you've listened, you can use the language they're speaking in and you can use some of those words as you speak back to them so that they feel as though you're more attuned. One strategy I'll give you is when I'm talking to someone and I'm listening to them, before I respond or start speaking, I go ahead and click my heel five times. I just hit my heel on the floor, one, two, three, four, five, after they stop talking. So they say, blah, 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 blah. Then they stop talking. I click my heel. One, two, three, four, five. If they're not talking, then I start talking. But you know what often happens, especially with women? Before you get to that five, they start talking again because they start babbling and then they think of something else and then they keep going because women are loquacious, verbose and wordy. So they will go on and on. But here's the key to women and people, men in general especially the less masculine men. More masculine men are of few words. They're of many actions. But people like to express themselves, especially females. So if you're a great listener, sometimes you will dissolve the problem simply by being a hearer of what she has to say. You'll, you'll swipe the, just the problem is gone just because you heard her out. Because often people just want to be heard, okay? So that's one strategy is click that foot. Strategy number two, keep that smile on. Keeps you chill, keeps them chill. You hear me? And it doesn't matter what you're talking about because you never want to get taken out of the zone of a player. You dig? You could be talking about your dead homies, but it's nothing. You got to keep it easy because, hey, what you have to remember in life is that there are challenges and one day you're going to have to die. Hey, I'm taking my death with a smile as well because the truth is, there's no need to get too caught up in a moment because moments pass. Anything you're angry about or challenged with will pass. It will go away. So don't get too deeply hung up on that. So he says how to communicate calmly and clearly. Also, when you're communicating with anyone, practice is key. Always speak respectfully. Speak politely. Speak directly. Speak clearly. Take ownership of what you're saying. Confirm understanding of what other people are saying. Those are best practices that will keep the whole thing calm. And when you find the other person getting out of control, politely address them. Say, hey, love, you know, it seems as though you're, you're getting a little bit agitated. How about we just put a pin in this and come back in 10 minutes, whatever the case is. You have to control the dynamic. Thank you for your question. CB Deuce. I am blessed. One of the new saints. Peace to the saint. Writes, of course, definitely appreciate it. Thank you. And the saint always super chats every single time. And as I said, it doesn't matter if it's a million dollars or it's one dollar. It's just that you show appreciation and respect. And that means a lot to me. C-Man. So Judy writes, how to make bread with no job, parentheses, teenager. There are actually a lot of programs in California. There was one called CalWORKs or summer job programs that allow you to get a worker's permit and get a job. Now, the truth is, at your age, you want to get advice from people who really specialize in getting teenagers jobs because obviously you're coming into the job market with very few skills, marketable skills, that is. So your high school counselor. There are also other nonprofit programs like Youth Works. And other things that you can Google and get in contact with them and say, hey, I live here. I want to get a job. Can you help me out? Things like Job Corps. Um, there are a ton of programs. So I would look into some of these nonprofits that specifically help with getting teenagers jobs because you're in a unique situation in that you're not bringing skills that businesses require. So you're going to have to kind of get in the back door unless you want to work for a McDonald's type of situation. And as I often say, there's no need to waste your time doing a job that's not aligned with where you want to ultimately be. Nothing wrong with working with for McDonald's if you eventually want to work for the McDonald's corporation headquarters or you want to be a manager in the restaurant industry. But if you don't, no need to flip burgers. Front Street writes, if all men cultivated an alpha-like mental point of origin, how could this massive shift in thought change Western economies? Well, I'm always more concerned with changing culture than economies, but I want you guys to understand this. And this is one of the things just yesterday, we we're going over the schedule for the conference, just making sure that everything is 
perfectly like a movie, whether it's our lighting, our music, the order of speakers, all these things. And at the beginning of our conference, we give a, a, a kind of a norm setting, which is, hey, enjoy. You're here to have fun. You're among friends and family. You're going to have a great time and make sure that you take notes because this is going to be things that will help you for the rest of your life. And also in a part of being yourself, you're not in competition with anyone. No one needs to be an alpha male here. Just enjoy yourself. So I want to first address that. You're right. If all men could cultivate an alpha-like mental point of origin. Well, the alpha, there's generally only one. That's the definition. The alpha is the one ahead of others. If we're always in a situation where everyone's trying to be the alpha, there will be protracted warfare. And, you know, no one can, not everyone can be the alpha. It's literally impossible by definition of the term. That's number one. Number two, an alpha-like mentality will not change the economy first. It will change the culture and the society first. So that's where you would see the change manifest immediately. The economy will take more time to change because if you look at university enrollment, it's primarily female. So if there's more females enrolled in universities, certainly they will be the controllers of the economies of the future. But, you know, the pimp and always going to have his hand on it. You dig? Because we in the background, you dig? Saying, hey, baby, lay it on me. Anyways, so I think first the culture will change. Secondly, um, economies are important. But the first thing that you have to manage before you're managing money is you have to manage culture. You have to manage norms, behavior. Even within my personal relationship, looking at the microeconomics. I manage all the money. All the money is within my control, mine and hers. But that's because I run the culture. You see, I set the culture and I run the culture and the culture culture is oriented around me being the leader. So that's the first thing to uh, consider. Thank you for the question, Front Street. Thank you for the super chat support. Appreciate that. And do not be a beta male provider, but always stand up as a man and always be willing to invest, saints. Let me make sure I'm not missing any of these super chats because I sh surely want to show support and respect to the men who show support and respect to me. Harris writes, hey, what would be three pieces of advice for young people? Piece of advice number one, manage your vices. You will make progress, progress in life no matter what. What will stifle your progress are your vices. By vices, I mean bad habits. Smoking, drinking alcohol, gambling, encounters with low women, manage your vices, you will accelerate much more quickly. That's number one. Number two, minimize your distractions, video games, anything that doesn't pay, pornography, masturbation, being idle, Netflixing, all that. Don't do it. When you're wasting time, someone else is beating you in the race. When you're wasting time, somebody else is in the gym getting more diesel than you. When you're wasting time watching Netflix, someone else is studying. They're writing. They're writing their first book. I started writing my book when I was 16. You heard me? Wow, I'm writing a book. You're playing video games. You'll never catch up. Number three, manage your emotions. If you can master your emotions as a young man, you will be a dangerous adult. You will be very dominant if you can control anger. You will be very effective if you can take anger, transmute it into something else, transmute it into motivation to be great. Oh, you'll be in good shape. Mr. Man in Action, I see you down there uh, saying, I'm going to get to these super chats. I'm going to bring you in. Carrying on. Dill, NYE TV writes, when is the right time to provide material gifts? Well, it depends on you. For me, for example, I am not into materialism. I'm not really even into gift giving, to be honest with you. But if I do give a gift, I certainly like it to be a surprise. Understand that for a woman, even for men at some level, the packaging is important, the delivery method is important, and the timing is critical. So for example, you want to get the most value out of your dollar. So what I used to do for one of my trill females, a super trill female, I would send her flowers to her job randomly every now and then. Now, I don't even like flowers, but the only reason I did it is so that she can get it in front of other women because women are community animals. So having the flowers delivered to her job in front of other women means more than if I handed them to her myself. You understand? Because she wants to be able to show off. 
That's how you got to think. Always think about the player move. It's not about the amount of money you spend. It's about how, not about what. It's always about how and how you do it should be the most player way possible. You dig? Now, I had a, a ton of beautiful side bitches. I never gave them shit. Gave them hard dick and bubble gum. You heard me. Debo writes the saint and the sinner versus Kevin Samuels debate. Debo, I'd absolutely love to do that debate. Now, here's the thing that cracks me up. A lot of these internet nerds, they're watching internet stuff and they think that Kevin Samuels or any of their favorite internet guys can see me not realizing I've competed at the highest levels of the society. You can find videos of me giving a keynote speech next to the chancellor of the University of California, Berkeley, who's a motherfucking physics scholar. Huh? You can see me giving speeches next to the governor of Virginia. Huh? You can see me all around this world at the top level. So if I can compete with the highest level of academia and politics to debate a YouTube guy, no problem. It's no problem. It's no problem. Papi, it's no problem. So I would tear his ass to pieces. You heard me? I would tear his ass to pieces mentally. And anybody who's your favorite YouTuber, I will dominate them mentally, physically, spiritually, and hoes wise. And I got a hoe so down if I told my hoe to kill the nigga, she'd kill the nigga, all right? So let's just keep it real. Yes, I'm talking reckless, but here's the thing. I've been delivering for what? Three decades? Delivering on everything I said for three decades? Check my G file. Cook up food rights, showing love, tuition. I truly appreciate that, Saint. That's a man thing to do. You heard me to stand up and pay what you owe. There's a difference between being a beta male provider and paying what you owe. A beta male provider is renting a woman. You heard me? He think it's blockbuster of bitches. He done walked in the blockbuster, picked him out a bitch. He done paid his money to rent the bitch. Not realizing when you're using money, you just renting the bitch. You don't own the bitch, but I own the bitch. You heard me? And when you own, you ain't got to pay. Huh? When you own, you didn't pay your dues. You ain't got to pay. Learn from that. Learn from the pimping. Y'all renting these hoes. Josh writes, what if you want your woman to be a stay-at-home mother to raise the children and homeschool them? Thanks for the knowledge. Josh, that's a fantastic question. And the reason a lot of women act crazy and talk crazy is because they have learned from their mothers who were not properly led by a man and probably not properly appreciated by a man. If a woman is doing her job of being a stay-at-home mom, which is a job, a full-time job that exceeds eight hours, then yeah, take care of the bitch because she's taking care of your seed and she's rearing them in the proper way. Now, if you see her with a whole lot of extra spare time, put her to work. Because if you're really a hustler, you can't bear to sit around and be working hard and see her laid up on the couch watching the Housewives of Atlanta while your ass is working multiple hours. Because that's just a waste. That's a waste of her talent and that's a waste of your leadership. But if she's going to make the contribution of being a stay-at-home mom, which is a very far-reaching job, then yes, there's nothing wrong with compensating her by covering her basic requirements. The problem is when you guys think that you got to put jewels on a bitch, when you guys think the bitch got to be in red bottoms, you paying for her to get her hair blown now and it costs $400, cut it out. Do not go too far. Do not live in opulence. Me, when you go to any home that I have, it is simple and modest. You look at my walls, there's nothing on them. My women live by my culture, which is minimalism, simplicity, modesty. The only thing I spend lavishly on is antique Rolls Royce. That's it. You know, I'm shopping for one right now. If you see a gorgeous ass Phantom 5 or Phantom 6, holla at your boy. They only made like 300 of them. It's goddamn hard to find one. Jay Breezy writes, peace to the saints from Port St. Lucie, Florida. Shout out. I was just hollering at a little bitch last night from Florida. She from Jacksonville. She married, though, but she's still talking to the pimp pan. Y'all better keep a leash on your bitch, man. Larnell down, since through the super chat, just wants to pay what he owes. I truly appreciate that, saint. Thank you for showing the love. Jay Stokes writes, women value your attention and affection Oh, excuse me. Women value the attention and affection of an alpha. That's why they don't mind giving it all to him. That's right. There are many values and many forms of capital in this world. 
Money is a form of capital. Time, emotion are forms of capital. Attention are forms of capital. You gentlemen would be wise to leverage those other types of capital instead of only the dollar because the dollar is not a true representation of who you are. Any man has the dollar, but not every man has the, the, the charm. Not every man has the mouthpiece. Not every man has the thinking. Not every man has the modesty or the humbleness. Leverage your characteristics to get that woman and make her all yours. Roger Two Fit writes, just want a quick tip on letting go of pent up aggression. Without specifics, life in general stresses me the hell out and the exercise just isn't enough of an outlet. Well, Saint, uh, my heart goes out to you because there is no more a destructive force in any human being than anger, hatred, and meanness. Those are destructive forces. So yes, exercise is a good thing, but remember, exercise does send positivity to the mind in the form of neurotransmitters like dopamine and serotonin, but what will ultimately fix that aggression that you have in the mind is dealing with what is causing it and understanding that you have to let go. Generally speaking, when you feel aggression in the present, it's from something in the past. And guess what? The past does not fucking exist. It's over. You can't get an undo. All right. So you have to let go of that, especially if you want to move into the future. You should be making big goals and beautiful plans and pursuing those plans. And that should be exciting. Where focus goes, energy flows. So you must focus on the beautiful future that you've planned for rather than the hideous past that's pissing you off, Saint. And make sure you get around good people and positive energy and be conscious of the words that you speak and the thoughts that you think because that will lead you to positivity or its opposite. Aaron Matlock writes, do you practice meditation? If so, how? Yes, I do practice meditation. And the difference between meditation and prayer, prayer, you are talking to someone else out there. Maybe Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, maybe Jesus, Joshua, Yahweh, somebody. But meditation, you're talking to your damn self. So what I like to do is I like to get in a dark room, a small enclosed space, maybe even a closet, no homo, um, and turn off the lights, close the door, sit there and Think about what I want, visualize it in bright colors. I literally meditate in two ways, either in that dark room with just myself in silence, thinking about what I most desire and also thinking about the work that I'm going to enjoy doing to make it happen. But for example, when I'm on a long jog, it's, it's a long jog. You run it for an hour. You hear me? You got nothing but time to think. Cut that music off. When I'm running for a long jog and I cut that music off, man, I'll be visualizing Phantom Six, and I'm just visualizing being in the back of it with my fine ass assistant driving me around. You hear me? We pull up somewhere. I look out to the side. I see somebody staring in the rolls, which they always do. You hear me? And I love it. And I just visualize me grabbing the curtains and closing the curtains and then laughing like a fucking villain. You hear me? So I like to visualize that because that's what makes things happen for me. And the curtains, that's the customization. So I'm visualizing. I want to put them in the custom curtains. I'm going to need the, real, the, the rear view mirror, uh, the rear view uh, camera, because it's a long wheelbase. It's a personal limo. This car is longer than an SUV, right? So I'm visualizing it in bright colors, and it makes me want to go get after it. It makes me want to put in those extra work hours, and it lets me know it's real. Everything I had, I've already seen. Everything I get, I've already been there before. You heard me? It's like I live two lives. I want you to know that. Anytime I get something good and beautiful, it doesn't feel fresh because I've already done it in my head so many times. I remember the first time I was in Dubai. You heard me? I was there with a badass French bitch. Woo! I ain't even going to tell you what she did to me. Taught me the definition of menage a trois. You heard me? And I remember when I was there, I was like, man, I visualized this. I knew this was going to happen. It's not a surprise, but you got to make it that clear in your mind. Meditation is key, saints. Because men, real men, real leaders, spiritual beings. You hear me? Cameron writes, do you believe in legal paperwork when investing in a house or anything that ties you with a woman, even if she has proven to be a loyal one? I prefer to make my investments independently. If you can make an investment without a woman, I advise you to do so. It's just neater. Because at the end of the day, if she's really your woman, she should believe that she has interest in that house. The only reason the paperwork is relevant is if you guys divorce, 
She want to get her hands on something. I don't even want paperwork wedding us together in legal marriage. I get married under Sassin law. You heard me? Sassin law is when a man is serious and a man gives his word, which is far more valuable than the government's law because I'm an outlaw as far as that's concerned. Blitz writes, how do you avoid putting a woman you want on a pedestal? Blitz, let me tell you this. When you are a a, a real thinker and you really see the world for what it is, and I encourage you to learn about this Marquetism, it will pull the wool away from your vision, which has been clouding it. How is it you would put a woman on a pedestal when they're mere flesh and blood just like you are? How is it you would put a woman on a pedestal when most of them inherently are not confident enough to go outside wearing their natural face? I could wake up and walk straight outside, no problem. A woman wakes up, needs a whole hour to put a mask on just to go in the public in front of people she doesn't know and may never see again. You're intimidated by that creature? How are you intimidated by a woman who has to sit in her menstrual blood for an entire week, which is a state of continuing uncleanliness? Huh? And that's just what they have to deal with. You're intimidated by that? How are you intimidated by a creature that is physically smaller and weaker than you, literally designed to be dominated by you? That's not manly to be intimidated by that. So come fuck this Marquetism, you dig? Learn who you really are. Remember, we wrote a three-sentence Bible. By we, I mean I. Wrote a three-sentence Bible, a three-sentence Quran. Number one, be yourself. Number two, be good to yourself. Number three, be good to good people. Focus on number one, be yourself. Yourself is a man. As a man, that is a privilege and an honor. You should never be intimidated by anyone, female nor male. Putting someone on a pedestal is to put them above you. Don't ever do that. I hope that helps, Saint. Zach V. Ronnie writes, peace, y'all. Hashtag real name gang checking in. Absolutely. It's always a reminder. When we come out, we show up with real names and real photos. You dig? Because unless you're running from the feds, there's no need to go out by an alias. You heard me? And that's what I tell a lot of the people I see in my comments, whether it's male or female, the detractors, they never have a real name and a real photo because they're fake and because they're cowards. Uh, and they never want to get on camera. You dig? So those people we don't even address because we can't take them seriously because they're not taking themselves ser seriously. Shout out to the men standing on all 10, going by their true name because that's what they represent. And they want their name to be known and ring bells because that's what I want for mine. And that's what I want for my whole lineage. Corey writes, hey, boss, looking forward to meeting you at the conference. Absolutely. Likewise, it's going to be a great time. Literally just uh, yesterday, uh, we had a meeting at 8 a.m. going through all the particulars, all the way down to the music, the timing of the lights. It's going to be a good time. We're very excited. And it will be one of the best planned uh, conferences you've ever been a part of. It'll obviously be the lowest cost conference that occurred in 20 in any year <laughs> she hit. Kevin writes, paying tuition, truly appreciate it. And the saint is currently, I believe, finishing up uh, paramedic, EMT, or ambulance training. So wishing him much success. James Pewitt sending through the super chat. Looks like he has a whip in the picture. It has the rear hinge doors. I love that. That's why I like the, the Phantom 5 and the Phantom 6. Got them rear hinge doors. You dig? I just like that, that, that little extra bit of flavor on my whips. Jay Maximus, again with the super chat. Truly appreciate that. He writes, while getting a girl on your program, can you school her too much? Is too much info a bad thing? Can intellect scare her away? She can't fully process. This is a brilliant question. Yes, you can say too much. As a man, especially when a woman is new to you, you really want to rely less on what you say, more on what you do, present tense, and what you have done, past tense. You better believe these hoes are Googling you, right? You better believe these hoes, if they're really interested in you, they're going to check on you. They want to see what you're about. And your works will speak for you. Who you have been does matter. So that's why I always encourage you guys to be a great man. You dig? So like with me, when a woman meets me, she's going to Google me off the rip. As soon as she Googles me, she's watching Marquette TV. And I'm proud of what she sees when she watches Marquette TV. You did, because when she types my name into Google and it populates the search results, the first thing it populates at the top is Marquette Burton, net worth. That's before you click enter. When you type in Marquette Burton, it auto suggests net worth. Why? Because people have been searching my net worth for years. That's why it suggests that. Why have people been searching my net worth? Because, man, since I was a young boy, I was pulling up in crazy cars. Since I was a young boy, 
I was living top of the world, you heard me? And people wonder why and how. A lot of these YouTube nerds, you say, oh, so-and-so has more followers than you. Yeah, but I was rich before him. You heard me? Like, that's what matters to me. And when a woman sees net worth auto-populate in her female mind, that translates to, oh, he's the man. Oh, he can provide. Oh, he must have accomplished things. He must be important. My past activities have done all the work. I don't need to talk about who I am. I talk shit to y'all because y'all need to know. huh? I talk shit to y'all so y'all could get where I'm coming from. But a female going to do her own research. I know their nature. They're curious animals. So once they do their own research and they program themselves, I don't have to say a lot. Further, you can't influence anyone until you have rapport, which is to say they like you or they respect you or they understand you, they admire you. When you have rapport, the things you say have more meaning. So sometimes you try to run a bitch's program too early. You ain't got juice like that. Wait till you got juice before you start thinking it's Simon Says and you're Simon. You might have jumped the gun. So that's a critical piece further. Getting intellectual on a bitch, bad idea. Most bitches aren't intellectual. Most people aren't intellectual. But females have a very low tolerance for dry, arid, intellectual conversation. They like light things. They like happiness, joy. That's why you look at dating profiles. They mostly say, I like a guy who can make me laugh. They didn't say, I like a guy who can make me think. No, 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 no. You don't want an intellectual bitch. Trust me. Hope that answers your question, Saint. Nicholas writes, love you, man. I have questions, but I don't know what to ask. I feel you saying I appreciate you just showing up with the with the tuition. It means a lot because we got 373 folks on the call. For some reason, they act like they can't click the like button. It makes me wonder about their psychology. One thing I know for sure, and I always promote this, if you can do something for someone else that means a little to you, but a lot to them, do it. Absolutely do it. That's why when I go to a, a resort and I have and I valet my car, and the valet guy uh, comes up. If I could tip him 20 bucks, I do. Why? Because 20 bucks to me doesn't mean anything. But a $20 tip to him means the world. You hear me? For $20, he remembers my name. For $20, when I show up again, hey, Mr. Burton, how are you, Mr. Burton? Like he's doing me all these favors. It makes me look like a boss. All that for $20? Shit, I'm going to spend that every day. That's a good buy. So as a boss, you always have to think as, as a boss and ask yourself, how can I do something that means a lot to someone else, but cost me very little? Because people, there are different expenses. $20 is a low expense to me, high expense to him. So if I could give that to him, I can get his loyalty. You heard me? When I go to certain places, the valet already know my name. That's because they're like, oh, that guy, he's a great tipper. Yeah, I mean, compared to everybody else, yeah. But compared to what I got in the bankroll, is nothing. So I leverage that to give me advantage. As a man, make advan uh, investments to give you advantage or to give you goodwill or to make you feel good. Because check this out. When you do good for good people, you feel good. That's number three in the Three Cents Quran. Be good to good people. How is it I'm on here giving you game, giving you my time? I don't got to give you my fucking time. It doesn't benefit me nothing. huh? I mean, think about it. All of the super chats in total don't equal up to this. They don't, they don't equal up to all, every super chat I got. Don't, I, I don't need the super chats. I want the respect. When you super chat, it's respect to me. Huh? So how could you be on here and not even have the nerve to click the like button? To me, it's crazy. And I don't raise people up like that. No, I want you guys to understand as a man, if you can click the like, it costs you nothing. Click the like. Why? Because you're a positive person. You're in good spirits. Always do the good thing that's easy to do. That's why we call you a saint. You do saintly things. If you can speak well of somebody, speak well of them. If you can compliment them, compliment them. It's a beautiful thing. Diva Divine writes, J slash C, I don't know what the hell that means, uh, writes, how would someone engage with someone who has called them out of their name, insulted their intelligence, and is confrontational? What is the upside? Generally speaking, beef doesn't pay. Generally speaking, conflict doesn't pay. So if you can't de-escalate the situation for your own benefit, then get out of there. Generally, there's there are times to fight there are times to run and there are times to ignore. It's just like, miss me with that. I don't have a lot of context from you, love, so I can't really dive into that. But when I'm about to engage in conflict, I ask myself, what are the outcomes that will benefit my ultimate goal? So for example, there's a lot of nerds on the internet who have made like uh, a review of Satan the Center, critique of Satan the Center. 
I've watched a few of them and most of them are not impressive. So I don't, I don't address them because they didn't do a good job. They weren't funny. And you know, like there's just no benefit to me addressing it. So I just ignore it. Then there are other people who like might do a great critique, like um, confidence creator. He's on YouTube. Check him out. He did a great critique of the black box. I watched it. It was great. And I plan on sharing it when I get some time, I'm going to download that video and repost it. And then there's other people like Kevin Samuels. If I get into a conflict with Kevin Samuels, you ask yourself, well, what's the benefit? Well, when he, I, I went at Kevin Samuels for being a phony on the business side. I never attacked anything else, just the business side. But I did that months ago, way before anyone else did. And now that he's gained virality, I gained virality with him. You hear me? That's one of my fastest growth videos. So that's beneficial. A real hustler always keeps their eyes on the prize. Don't engage in meaningless conflict. That conflict benefited me. I'm always playing chess out here. These hoes is playing checkers, though. Don't be a fall down bitch playing checkers. Go, you know, be a stand up hoe playing chess. You dig? Go with the pimping. Play that chess. Let me make sure we get back to these super chats. And uh, thank you for your support, uh, Diva Divine. Much appreciation for all of the ladies, the real women who support my work who can deal with the truth. I have nothing but respect and appreciation for you. And I hope that um, everyone else does too. Um, Red Sings the Blues writes, my donation to you, man. I'm about to buy your book and review it on my podcast. I'd like to talk to the author. Absolutely. Um, Red, I do recognize you from having supported over time. So definitely uh, drop us a note. We'll see if we can make that happen. As a man, I never give promises out front trying to predict the future. But what I can tell you is reach out and we will figure it out. We'll, you know, we'll look into what the possibilities are. So I appreciate your um, your support and I think you'll enjoy the book. And what I want to encourage everyone to do is if you can avoid giving your word, avoid it because your word will mean nothing if you don't keep your word. And I always want to keep my word. So I try to never give it until I can give my word and it is gold. So thank you for that super chat. Carrying on. SX Moneymakers writes, tuition, going to watch this later because I'm at work. Absolutely, totally understand. I like this one. This is the girl who was scared to come on screen. Now, this is great. I'm not even going to read her comment, but I'm going to say that she she's calling other people narcissists. She has all these insults, but she won't come on screen to, to share her opinion. She won't come on screen to speak up. And she, look at the last thing she writes, ashamed of yourself. She's ashamed of herself because she won't come on screen and represent herself. Saints, I want you to understand, you will never be successful without having people like this. Why? Because losers feel more like a loser in the presence of a winner. You'll never have success without these people. You have to love these people. Hey, Keisha, baby, or Car Carisha, whatever your name is, it doesn't really matter what your name is because you're a loser and a nobody. And if you were somebody, you'd have enough guts and decency to come on screen. But here's the thing. Think about the kind of time this woman is wasting on my channel. She hates me, but she's still here watching Marquette TV. If that ain't a lesson from a pimp, what is? Because she's actually benefiting me by helping the algorithm. Thank you, Carisha, you dumb bitch. Carrying on. Um, and by the way, uh, one of the mods, go ahead and uh, block her, whatever we can do, whatever we can do. She's clearly a, a mentally unwell person. Uh, XL Dixon writes, blessings to the saints. Is it wise to ask a woman for financial help if you are rebuilding? That is curious. Let us say that if this is a woman who is on your team and in your support and you have a plan to utilize the finances for something meaningful, then she should offer. What you'll find is that a pimp shouldn't have to ask a bitch to give him the money. She knows he's the pimping. She needs to offer that. You hear me? So if you really are a man and you are focused and you're hardworking and you have a master plan, and if you're wise, you should be sharing your master plan so you can bring people in to help you work the plan because you need a teamwork to make the dream work, then she should make an offering if she's your female. But if you haven't really dominated her in the right way, meaning taking leadership and responsibility for that woman, she's not going to make that offering. And if she don't make that offering, she's not really yours. She might be for the streets. Swiffer Wetjet writes, peace to the saints out of Cleveland. 
I've been through to Cleveland. Um, Cleveland has some cool spots that I won't speak about, you dig? But if you're from Cleveland, you probably know what I'm thinking about right now. I saw um, Mark Curry, I think uh, the guy from Hanging with Mr. Cooper. I saw him do live comedy there. It's pretty good. Cameron Cole writes, what are some tips to enhance your style? Peace. Uh, tip number one, with regards to style, there's two major elements. Number one element is to look good. Your physique matters, right? When you wear clothes that fit well, that matters. That's the easiest thing you can start with is wearing clothes that actually fit your body well. That's why wealthy men get their suits made from scratch or they get them tailored. Me, I get mine made from scratch. All of my suits are one of one, none before, none to come. You can't get anything that looks like it. And that's the second part of style, which is to be unique. The reason we do anything is to attract a bitch, right? And if you're a player, you just are accustomed to these things but you want to attract the eye. That's what style is for, to attract that good attention. You can do that by just being remarkable, meaning not looking like other people look. That's something to consider. So I actually did make a video that you need to watch. It's called, I think it's called how to dress player or how to how to dress like a pimp, something like that. I can't remember to be honest with you, but I'm sure one of the saints can direct you there. There's a specific video that's all about style. Thank you for your question, Saint. Ethan writes, I paid 15 bucks a couple days ago to become a follower and the content makes it worth it, guys. I haven't viewed his vis business videos yet. He shows little details I've never noticed. Ethan, I truly appreciate that. And I really do want to be known by my works. I want to be known for honesty and integrity and in all of the businesses that I do. And I really try my best. In fact, we sold out a hat. And last night, um, someone bought a hat and Bridget emailed me and said, hey, somebody bought a hat. Um, you need to let them know that they're sold out. I immediately got on. I refunded that individual and I emailed him. Hey, thank you for your support. These hats are sold out. Your money has been sent back to you. That's the way we do business. Quality, timeliness. Same thing with my content. These are things that are going to really help you. I don't make this for my own good. I make this because I want to see you successful. I want to see more men at the top who have the same culture as I do. You heard me? I want to see the saints winning. So I appreciate you saying that, Saint. And this is factual, what he said. Larnell writes, Marquette, are we living in a matriarchal society? The society is not matriarchal. The culture is leaning toward matriarchy and it is on an orientation in that direction. That is correct. That's the primary reason I'm doing my work because societies crash when they are matriarchal. And for example, you can see America is in its decline right now, tremendous national debt. And while we have debt, China has surplus and they're investing around the world. It's called the Belt and Road Initiative. I know because I was in China with the Chinese government talking about it. You dig? And I know the places they're investing around the world and I understand their global effort. Um, so we are in decline. That's why our society is becoming more matriarchal. Western societies are becoming more matriarchal. So it is a clear symptom of uh, a society on its last throes. Javi writes, lessons from a pimp. Thanks for the game, always king. Have you ever been called controlling by women by setting your rules and standards? Oh, the pimping don't control the bitch. No, no, no. Pimping tells the bitch, doors work two ways, baby. You can come out them, you can go out them. You hear me? I'm not here to force you to do anything. I'm going to lay out my program, my way of life, my standards. And if you're with it, you're with it. You can get right or you can get left. You dig? So I've never once in life been control, uh, called controlling because I don't try to control a woman. You hear me? I mean, in fact, I have such influence over a woman to where I could tell her to slap herself. Huh? That's submission. That's not force. You don't pimp from the hip. You pimp from the lip. You dig? A woman will submit herself to a great man. So you don't have to use force. It's not Ike Turner. You don't pimp gorilla pimp. You finesse pimp. You dig? So I want you to understand that when a woman comes into your influence, when you've romanced her mind and kissed her thoughts, she will yield to you. Huh? ABO says in the Euros. Right, just supporting the cause. Truly appreciate that, Saint. 
AR Lifestyles writes that that was a great question that Javi had super chatted. And I do agree because a lot of guys, they come in gorilla pimping. They're angry, mean, and vengeful, and they want to control and rule the woman. What they don't realize is the more your woman views you as a wicked, mean person, you are losing currency rapidly. And once you've lost it, you can't get it back. You heard me? That's why I always say keep it player because you can never retract a mean word. Charlie Sardi writes, where your focus goes, your energy flows. Truth. You are teaching and reminding men in every video you make to be their true, authentic self. It gets no better than that. Thank you. Hey, peace to the saint. And Charlie had uh, hopped on the, the video call last time. I didn't get to merge him in before he hopped off. And I do want to let you guys know, please forgive me if it takes a while because Mr. Man in Action was going to join as well. But I try to make sure I get through all of the super chats before I merge folks on because I just really want to make sure I've honored everyone who has honored me. You know, relationships are about reciprocity, which means you both give. In Puerto Rico, they say, um, hoy por mi, mañana por ti, like today for me, tomorrow for you, or today for you, tomorrow for me, which is to say that like, I'm going to look out for you, look out for me. Sometimes I'm giving, sometimes you're giving, but it's reciprocal, meaning that we both have to give. We can't just be takers. No one wants to be around takers. No one wants to be used. That's why we had the initial topic of, are men the providers, the, the sole providers? The answer is no. It's never been that way in human history. Why would it be that way now? Aquarius, Leo 8 writes, click the freaking like button. Agreed. It's the least you could do. And me, when I support somebody, I'm going to click the like button off the rip because what does it cost me? Zero dollars? No energy? I mean, that's a simple thing. If you can't do that, you shouldn't follow my work because you're missing the concept of being a saint. You're totally missing that. Carrying on. Drug Hours writes, peace. Shout out to the same man, looking sharp. I love to see a, a gentleman clean shave. He got the necktie on and everything. He dressed for success, man. That's a beautiful thing. And if you think the way you dress, the way you look will not affect your pocketbook, you're a fool. Absolutely. Tony Parker. Man, my boy got the player picture. You heard me? Look like he got the fur popping off. I love it. Writes, is it ever optimal to get in a long term relationship in your early 20s with a woman, or is it wise to be a lone wolf? Back to the three sentence Bible. Number one, be yourself. Number two, be good to yourself. Number three, be good to good people. Number one, be yourself. For me, it was not optimal to get into a long term relationship in my early 20s because I lacked a lot of knowledge, I didn't have understanding, and I needed more experience to really know how to properly manage a relationship and lead a woman in the right way for the long term. So that wasn't right for me. So if I was being myself, I wouldn't have did it. And I didn't. For you, that might be the right thing. Depends on your background, depends on what you seek in your soul. So you have to look within yourself. And also it says, be good to your, uh, be yourself, be good to yourself. If you don't do that, which your soul desires, you're not being good to yourself. If your soul says, Tony, man, give me a bitch that we could hold on to. That's what you got to do. Be money sends in the euro, or I think that might be the pound. Please forgive me. Sends in the British pound. Appreciate it. Thank you, Saint. And you think a guy like me would, <laughs> would know the difference straight away. Shame on me. Uh, please forgive me if somehow I missed your question. Shout out to the super chat coming via cash app from, I, th I feel like I already know who it is, but let me see, Metal Baby Slayer. I thought it would be. Metal Baby Slayer, truly appreciate it. It looks like, did he send a question with it? No, he just sent through the love. I appreciate that. Thank you for the support, Saint. Carrying on. And again, if I've missed your super chat, write super chat in all caps. Give me time because I'm going through, but write super chat in all caps and then rewrite your question. Be money, right? Shout out from London, bruv. Shout out, man. I can't wait to get over there. Now, you know, I've, I've had some lovely experiences with women from London, but I've yet to touch down on the soil, but I will be there. Tony Parker writes, I just finished your book a few days ago, and it is one of my favorite books of all time. Thank you for your wisdom. Tony, I truly appreciate that. And I know that you will be prosperous because the kind of man who has patience, patience enough to read a book, patience enough to appreciate a great work. That is a man who has all of the presets that are required for success. Patience is a major aspect of being successful because you can endure 
things that may be drudgery, things that may be boring, things that may be, you know, hard to do. But my book was not one of them. It was fucking fire. It's exciting. It's written like a movie, you dig? But the act of reading is a slow process, you understand? Especially when you're reading for true understanding. So shout out to Tony Parker. I appreciate it. If you haven't gotten the black box, you can get a very low cost copy on ebook at www. T H E S A S N. Just click the black box. Nicholas Williams is back, writes paying tuition. I'm watching daily to influence myself on the game through repetition. Nicholas is very wise because repetition is the mother of skill. Even I go back through and listen to my own words because to know what is right and to do what is right are two different things. I too must constantly be re-imbued with that which is right so that it will affect my behavior because to be a human being is to be flawed. To be a human being means that you need to retrain and reprogram so you are wise to keep going back over good knowledge. Absolutely. The master, i.e., writes, peace to the saints. Can you explain why an intelligent woman is problematic? I appreciate the knowledge you share, man. An intelligent woman is not wholly problematic. In fact, she can be very useful in your business affairs. So let me clarify, or rather let me elaborate. An intelligent woman is fantastic because she has capacity. She can operate on your behalf. She can support your thinking and give you alternative perspectives. She can even correct things that you've done, whether it's your book. She can edit the book for you, catch mistakes in emails you sent out, whatever the case is. A woman who is an, in, an intellectual may be one who is prone to babbling incessantly about you know, very lofty ideas that don't impact your day-to-day affairs. Because women are not tasked with the important primary responsibility of earning money because they can leverage their vagina to get many things, the intellectual female is often a problem and an idler. So an intellectual might not be the kind of woman you want unless you like long drawn out conversations about shit that doesn't matter. Um, But an intelligent woman is a gem. Thank you for asking about that. J Maximus, back again with the super chat. He didn't popped off the super chat competition. He's going for the gold. I appreciate the detail. Answer, my G. What's your opinion of Dr. BOA? Would love to see a critique, or do you plan on having conferences in the future? I don't plan on having conferences in the future. Um, and forgive me if I've ever spoken to that because I really try to be conference about speaking about the future, which doesn't exist, right? The future has not yet arrived. It's too far away. Our first conference is going to be dope though. And let me not say our first, I I should say the conference we're having. Um, You know, some things you do and you find out that was really fun, but not the best use of my time. For example, we are planning this thing out to the second. It's taking so much time, so much investment of emotion, of financial capital, my capital, because I didn't charge enough for the tickets. So I got to cover the extra. You, you heard me? So there's like, you know, it, it's a, a big expense in all areas, but I'm going to enjoy it. I want to meet the saints. So this is going to be great because I'm not about internet shit. You heard me? I'm about real life love. You know, I'm about real life progress, real life goals. Um, some people made it on the internet. That's cool. I made it in real life. You dig? You can see pictures of me with billionaires. Michael Bloomberg of Manhattan, you heard me? Michael Bloomberg, the mayor of New York. You can see pictures of me talking to him in an interpersonal conversation, not a photo op, you dig? I made it in real life. That's why I want to bring the saints in real life so we could talk about really getting to work. Uh, Your question of what's my opinion of Dr. BOA? Um, I've seen his channel because a lot of folks have referenced his channel. Uh, It seems like he's giving some straight talk. If I'm being honest, I've not watched an entire video of his, um, but seems like he's straight talking. I'd love to do a, a collaboration because I can only assume that he's trill because so many of my people are also his people. So if someone wants to uh, reach out to him and get a collaboration set up, I'm 100 percent open to it. And I like talking with men who have straight talk because we don't have to agree. You heard me. He could say his perspective. I say my perspective. It'll be very rich. Would I do a critique of him? I actually don't do critiques randomly, if you um, can believe that. 
all of the critiques I've done have been either because I saw something and I was disgusted. Like Coach Pink Pill, when I saw that video of him complaining, I was like, that's not manly. I cannot have the youth misguided. He's spreading corruption among the youth. That's why I did that one. When I saw Corey Wayne telling your, you guys, Coach Corey Wayne, telling you guys how to get your ex back, I was like, no, we don't move backward in life. We move forward. That's errant. I must correct it. When I saw the four horsemen of the game, I saw, well, how are you the four horsemen of the game? But ain't nobody talking about game on here. You guys just talk about social media and online dating. That's not game. Let me correct it. So I'm coming in the game to correct that which is errant. You hear me? I'm not coming in the game just to do critiques for fun. You dig? So if I see somebody and I'm like, you know what? This seems like good game. I just let it be. I say that's a beautiful thing. And that appears to be the case with uh, Dr. BOA. So I'd be happy to do a collaboration with them uh, if you guys want to set that up, if you guys are connected to the same. Nina sends through the pound, writes, in regards to your title, what about Islamically? I did speak on this Islamically, Nina, and there are, religion is one thing. If you are signed up for Islam, you're engaging in a religion that is all-encompassing. But the challenge is that so few of you, Muslims, Arabs, whatever, actually follow the deen. So why is it you want to follow the deen when it comes to a male being a provider but you don't want to follow the dean when it comes to you being obedient. It says you should be obedient to your husband. Obedience is the same as a child, which means the husband is in utter control. But you guys don't do that. Further, the dean says that you should never be out in the public by yourself as an individual female. But you guys still do that. Further, the Quran reads, quote, but you guys don't follow that either, do you? Which tells you to cover your body, cover your parts, which should be only visible to your husband, your bosom, your legs. But you guys are still out wearing skirts and low-cut shirts, right? So why do you want to pick apart the Quran like it's a buffet and you get to take the dish that you like? Most women are not really religious. Most men are not really religious. And the worst part about it is rather than being honest and saying, hey, I'm a saint and a sinner. Help me out. I'm trying my best to be a saint. They try to pretend as though they're very pious. So Islamically, there are a couple of things that do not work very well for human beings today. And I'm going to point them out. Number one is Islam, Judaism and Christianity say that you should um, marry before moving in with the man. Well, you generally do things better if you practice it first or you test it out first. Who goes to buy a car without test driving it? Which is to say, you have a lot of people who would live in their parents' home until they're 27, 28, male and female. The girl hasn't even learned to cook because her mom's still cooking for her at 28 because the mom doesn't have common sense. Then they get married, move into the home of a man, and they're already old. You're 28 year old woman, you're old. You already know what side of the bed you like to sleep on. You have all these fixed traits. You're not flexible and malleable. The relationship falls apart. The marriage breaks. Why? Because you didn't get to test if you guys know how to live together. So Islam is a great thing, but it's a whole system of thinking. It's an integrated system. You can't take parts of it and enact the parts. It won't work. It only works if you take it wholly and enact the whole thing. You pray five times a day. The man is the leader. You're obedient to the man. Because he has total control, he's also the provider. It's a whole integrated system that works together as one, not when you pick apart the pieces that you personally like because they benefit your self-interest. Carrying on. Thank you for that question. That's a very question. A uh, good question. Try Savvy is back. Right, Marquette. Do you remember leading a woman to their own self-related goals if they desire a side hustle slash endeavor? Blessing to the assassin. Saint, as a saint, you should always be a cool breeze to someone. You should always be someone people can reflect on positively. And there are many men and women who can say, Marquette told me something that changed my whole perspective. Marquette gave me an introduction that connected me with a business partner or an investor, or Marquette showed me how to operate X, Y, and Z, and now I'm making a million dollars a year. You know, male or female, you should be adding value. If you're a wise man, a man of knowledge, undoubtedly you are going to lead many people to the promised land because that's your wiring. When you are a winner and all you know how to do is win, that's all you know how to teach is winning. You see, a woman who has her own interests and ambitions, there's nothing wrong with that. 
And you should surely support that because the wealthier your woman is, the wealthier you are. So surely you should support that as long as it does not interfere with your ultimate ends. I highly recommend that. And certainly I have done that. Emmanuel writes, tuition, appreciate the work you do for the SAS. And thank you. And I also want to shout out the, the council, uh, guys like Preston, um, Gaius, Deep, um, you know, so many guys who spend their time volunteering their time to make sure that this conference is going to be a success, to make sure that we have services to give you guys. I cannot do this all alone. So I do want to acknowledge them and shout out to the lady saints as well and any saints on the council that I have not mentioned right now. Please know that you are in my heart. Fables writes, peace to the saints. Would love to get your view on using Socratic questioning to Dr. Phil. Maybe a video one day. Uh, give me one second. Let me sweep some water. I've mentioned Socratic questioning in a previous video. I'm not going to elaborate on it because there's a ton of videos. You just Google Socratic questioning in YouTube. Uh, you'll find many videos on it. To Dr. Phil, a woman is to in part use Socratic questioning. So fables, I think that it's a very wise thing. And we should really be using that in life in general, especially where conflict is involved. Because what you'll notice when there's any level of disagreement or conflict, there's a breakdown in understanding, generally speaking. So the more questions you can ask, you get closer to the truth and the bridge of understanding. They call it common ground. So that's a very good thing. Thank you for sharing that, Saint. Cook Up Food writes, recently moved back to the States from Europe. Any advice on establishing a name for myself in this new place? Peace of the Assassin. Well, number one, this three sentence Bible, be yourself, be good to yourself, be good to good people. One, you have to be yourself, meaning you can only establish your name based on doing the things that you are uniquely suited to do. So me, I can never establish my name trying to be a soccer player because I'm not great at soccer. You have to ask yourself, what are you great at? And that's where you will start to build your name based on that. That's number one. Further, we say be yourself, be good to yourself, and be good to good people. When you do good things, this will build a name for you. The more people you serve, the more people who will serve you, more people who will esteem you, who will promote your name. You look at the Prophet Muhammad. He was known as a honest man. They brought him in to mediate when there was disagreement between two angry parties because his reputation and his name was that well known because he had been good to good people. So my three sentence Quran, the third sentence is be good to good people. Surely that will make your name very known. When I look at some of the awards I've been privileged to earn, like for example, I got an award from the Global Good Fund. That's for doing good around the world. Well, my name is more known because of the good I did. Do good, be good to good people. If you uh, follow me on Instagram at WW, or I get uh, my handle is Marquette Devon, M A R Q U E T T D A V O N. You'll see that um, in Colombia, in, um, in Comuna 13, they tagged my name on the wall, Jeremy the Youngins. And they don't do that just for anybody. I'm not from their hood, I'm not even from their country. When you're good to good people, people honor you, they will honor your name. That's why my initials are tagged on a wall in Comuna 13. You heard me? Uh, Javi Ramirez writes, thanks, King. I agree. Dress nice and look different. Absolutely. Don't follow everyone else's style. Be unique and remarkable. You ain't never lied. I'd rather be remarkably tacky than looking average. You know, I'd rather be remarkably tacky than be invisible. When you look all right, you're invisible. That's why when I was a young and I never wore Jordans. To this day, I've only ever worn one pair of Jordans, and that's because they were a special limited edition that nobody else could get. And that's the only time I wore Jordans because I knew I was the only one with them. Yiddig. The shoes I have on this very moment, they're a one of a kind, one of one, none before, none to come, custom handmade by my own design. That's the key. Arari, Amari, sends through the super chat. I truly appreciate that saying thank you. Natural brother. Uh, give me a second. I think my house cleaning is here. <laughs> One second. Yes? Is that housekeeping? Walk with me. Talk with me, saints. Man, I tell you, life is good. You heard me? 
I can't complain. I think that's housekeeping. Let me see if we can get a few minutes ease, you dig? Good morning. Good morning. How are you? I need something to say, sir. Um, no, can I just have some toilet paper and bath towels? Okay. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, sorry about that, Saints. Um, anyways, let's see. So uh the Swoovius, what it do, Saint? I don't I think I might have accidentally clicked that. Okay. The Swoovius writes. Salute to the assassin, King Q. What are your thoughts on turning possessions into trust, land, real estate, etc.? I think that's a good idea. And trust, those are great vehicles and they actually vary by state. I know we're going over some people's head right now, but you can have a trust, which is essentially an instrument in which you can hold assets. And each state has different rules. What I like about the state of Missouri, and this is big money talk, you dig? You ain't got money unless you know about how they vary by state. You can hold money in there and it can be accessible to you in retirement or accessible to your children. And it cannot be penetrated in a divorce. So a woman can't take it if you divorce her. So it's a great safety place to put your assets. You dig? So I really like the, the trust. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Could you just say thank you so much? Sorry about that. There's great surface here. Swiffer Wetjet writes, an idle mind is the devil's playground. You are right about that. And there ain't nothing more wicked than being broke. People say money's the root of all evil. Shit. They ain't never been in poverty. I've seen the most wicked things happen in poverty. You dig? I say idle time and stupidity. Those are two devils. Thank you, Swiffer Wetjet. Rob Love. Like the suit. Look at the same looking player. It's a beautiful thing. Rights continue to provide knowledge, experience, and wisdom to males on their path to becoming outstanding men. Absolutely. And one thing I really want to emphasize to you guys is self-talk is critical. You remember there was a earlier there was a hair-hatted hooligan on here, a lost female who was here just to destroy and spread wickedness. And what you have to do is have positive self-talk because she is a mere representation of many of the sick people in the society who would try to tear you down. And that is the very reason you have to build yourself up strong every single day. Because here's the thing, she would come and randomly attack someone who's not attacked her. Shows the wickedness. And for that reason, that's why you have to be mentally fortified. Now me, what do I care about her? Not a damn thing. And that's the same thing you should care about your detractors, especially if you're in my position, which is a position of tremendous strength, right? I don't give a shit what that bitch says. Don't nobody know that bitch. You heard me? That bitch is a loser. Carrying on. And he's right. I'm absolutely built different. Nerd ass low. Ho. Yeah. Joshua writes, how should I go about spitting game during this lockdown in the UK? Can't rely can't really meet up due to guidelines. Appreciate the knowledge of you can't say talking. Let me give you guys a real story, man. And I hope this chick isn't watching right now. This is a sad story, actually. I was out at a financial institution a couple of weeks ago before I went to Columbia. And I'm out at this financial institution, you dig? And to the point about style, I'm wearing a mouse suit and I'm wearing a an ostrich. I'm wearing a fur hat. You dig? I'm not gonna tell you what kind of fur. I'm wearing a fur hat. You dig? So I look completely weird. And this shorty is just eyeballing the pimp and so strong, man. I didn't even really want to holler at her because she was a height. But she was eyeballing the pimp and so strong. I said I gotta holler at her. She looked like she want to be a disciple. So I came over to her. I said, how are you doing? She says, fantastic. I said, I'm Marquette Devon Burton. Here's my card. I'm on the run. Bang my line. We'll link up. She says, absolutely. I made a video about it exclusive for my patrons, exclusive at patreon.com. And then we followed up on text. I also put that exclusive on patreon.com. Also, it's exclusive on uh, www.thesasn.com. So I went through the text conversation to show you how to interpret it. Then just recently I had her pull up, you dig? So she, you know, came through to where I where I was at. And when she showed up, I was looking at her like, hold on, bitch. I don't remember you looking like this. It, I was like, how in the fuck did I get catfished by somebody I already met in person? And it's because she had that mask on and hoes be looking hella decent with that mask on. But the body, she had on one of those robes, you know what I'm saying? Like that long thing where it's like a three-quarter length and it's wrapped around. And she looked like she had hella shape 
in there. But when she pulled up on me, I guess she knew it was probably going to go down. So they don't wear them like gut squeezers, right? She didn't have a gut squeezer on. And I was looking at her like, hell nah, shorty, you didn't went from like an eight to like a cool six. Bitch was a six, man. It hurt my heart, man. But I'm a, I'm a saint. So I want to see what's in her head. Mentally, she was a cool little bra. So I wasn't going to do her dirty and just send her straight home. You hear me? If she'd have said something goofy, I'd have sent her ass straight home. And I'm known to do that. But, you know, I gave her a good time, took her out for a nice dinner. We had, you know, had some fun and, uh, you know, let her call it a day. You dig? Am I going to bang her line again? Hell no. Hell no. Now, how should I go about spending game during a lockdown in the UK? Number one, I don't know the nature of your lockdown. I'm not even going to pretend. I'm in a free country, you dig? Well, not the whole country's free, but my state and city are pretty free. So we're we're blessed, Saint. But in your case, this internet, this app stuff, this online dating, I know it feels easy to do. I highly recommend against it. It's a big waste of time unless you're in a certain position. I am going to do an exclusive video for my uh, members about how to do the online dating thing if you must. Because I want to like show them what my experience is like when I do online dating and let them know how you can really leverage it if you have to do it. So I'm going I'm to do that as an exclusive. But I'm sure you still have to go out in the public to grocery shop or to do basic things or to go out for a run outside, go for your jog, whatever the case is. You still can stop and talk to a woman face to face because should it be on your mind that as much as you would like companionship, a woman would like companionship as well. A woman will not see a man that she's sincerely interested in and give up on him just because it's COVID-19. Do not let these surface things become excuses. The human drive for connection is very powerful. We know this because you have people who will have sex without condoms with strangers in an era where you can catch HIV, herpes, and some more shit. So don't, don't let you think or even me consider that this COVID-19, which is has a high recovery rate, is not as deadly as HIV AIDS, does not stay with you for life like Herbie's, don't you for a second think that's going to stop you from getting a bitch. A real man knows that these veneers, these small things, these are hurdles to average men. These are not hurdles to great men, okay? So keep spitting that goddamn game. Um, appreciate that, Saint. Give me one second. My my, I think my assistant is asking me what time um, I want her to come by. I'll have to get back to her a little bit later. Okay, I see my brother P Dat. P Dat. Um, <laughs> P Dat writes Starlight twenty eight is old. Yeah, dig. Shout out to P Dat. Women and men do not age in the same way. It's not to say a woman does not have value in older age. She does have value. It's just that she's having value in different ways. Men are, are, you know, in some cases gaining value as they age because if a woman's looking for a provider, you're more and more able to provide the older you get, generally speaking. Um, men are not looking for providers. Men are looking for youthful beauty, generally speaking, the externalities. As a result, the woman is declining in value rapidly from 16. Now, and shout out to Brother PDAT because PDAT and I, know each other from real life, you dig? Uh, we met in Cincinnati and I love seeing cats who know me in real life because I always encourage you guys to check check people's G files, you hear me? Your favorite YouTuber, see who they've been over a whole lifetime. You'll never see me in public, uh, in public or on TV or any time where someone calls me out and says, you used to be a goddamn nerd. Nah, I've been winning my whole life, yeah. Joshua, we got to that super chat. I think we we're winding down. I'm just going to hit these last couple and we shall call it a night. Whoa. Give me a second. I don't want to miss any. DY writes, would you say natural and surgical weight loss yield the same results with improved habits, especially after years of failed attempts to slim down? DY, thank you for sending a sincere question, dear. And shout out to the lady saints who have the guts to listen to my content because I'm giving it to you straight with no chaser. Surgical weight loss and natural weight loss are radically different in that when you lose the weight surgically, that's someone else taking the weight off of you. When you lose the weight naturally, 
You've changed not only your body, but you've changed your mind. You've become mentally a more fit person. Huh? You've done the hard work, or shall we say you've paid the cost to be the boss. So if you're dealing with a woman who's lost the weight through hard work and dedication and a woman who went to Dr. Miami, those are two different women, period, because the level of willpower is different. Now, I will tell you straight away, my whole life, I've been in good physical shape. I've never been overweight ever, not even for a second, ever. So that's one thing to consider. But I want you to know this. For boxing, I've had to go from a healthy walk around weight, which I walk around at like 185 in perfect physical condition, like I could run through a goddamn wall. I've gotten down to like 162. Now, mind you, when I'm at 185, I have no body fat. I'm at 185 ripped. You heard me? When I get to 162, I'm emaciated. You dig? I'm in very bad condition. And I do that to get down to my fighting weight so I can weigh in for my bout. You dig? So I understand how to lose weight safely, healthy. I know how to lose weight quickly. Losing weight is the same way no matter who you are. It's caloric deficit. And there's no such thing as I can't lose weight. You're lying. Hey, you're lying. You're lying, but it's okay though. I'm not here to chastise. I'm not here to judge. I'm here to love, but I just want to let you know that when I needed to lose weight for a boxing match, because I really wanted it. And because in my mind, I'm a fit person and I'm fit for whatever, whatever the it takes to win, I'm fit to do that, whatever it takes. So I want you to know, I went from 185 to 162 within two weeks. I can lose 20 pounds Within a week, I've done it before. I work out three times a day, literally. Work out in the morning, work out midday, work out uh, at night. And I'm eating very little food, surviving on rice cakes and protein water. You hear me? A little bit of protein water, some rice cakes. Let's go. Let's get it. So you can lose the weight. You just didn't have it in your head. You hear me? You didn't have the willpower. So I don't want to lie to you and, and say that they're the same. It is radically different. The person who loses the weight and the person who gets it cut off their body, those are two different people. Number one. So when you say, do they yield the same results? No, because surgery is damage and trauma to the body. We cannot pretend that's not the case. Surgery will always leave scars, whether they're big or small, physical, mental, or spiritual. Surgery will always leave scars. I always recommend against it. But hey, love, if you've already done it, the die has been cast. And one thing I can tell you is there's no need to imprison yourself in the past. If you did it, you did it. Let's talk about today. If you have good habits today, that's a beautiful thing. And I encourage you to keep those good habits. But in the future, moving forward, I want you to know everything you ever wanted to achieve is already within you. The great person that you know you are, you already are that person. That's why in the Creed of the Assassin, the last sentence is to always show the greatest part of who I am. If you can do good habits now that you're slim, you could have did that when you were fat. huh? You could have did that while you were fat and then slimmed down over time. The greatness is already within you. It's only upon you to bring it out. So DY, thank you, love, for sharing that question. I appreciate you bring a, being a brave woman to share that question. And thank you for listening and tuning in. Count Rios writes, Christianity is a new term within 150 years. Holiness is the actual term the scriptures talk about. Go ahead. I'm not going to get into this preaching because I'm not a theologian, but I can dig it. The baker is back. He writes, just showing love and paying tuition. Thanks for helping shape my 21-year-old mind, Saint. I've much to learn, but I'm ahead of the game being here. Saint, look, just listening, you're ahead of the game. If you're taking action, you own the game. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Count Rios is back. He writes, being a Christian, Christianity is day and night. Oh, I agree, Saint. Talking about it and being about it are radically different things. I don't dig too much into religion because religion tends to draw separation between us. And further, the irony is most of the people I hear to be religious, they're not the people who are doing good works. They're the people who are judging. They're the people who are looking down on other people. 
They're the people who think they're holier than thou. They're the people who are hypocritical. That's why I rarely talk about religion, my own religion or anyone else's. Arari Amari writes, greetings sent again. He coming through with the super chat, shout out. And it's amazing how one man can super chat multiple times and others can watch 30 different lives and super chat zero times. Freeload over 100 different live sessions. And I want you guys to understand, that's why I don't believe in equality. Never have. I believe in hierarchy. Your rewards are according to your works. You dig? That's how people get paid out. That's why there's no true equality in the world. That's why a man like me can have three women and they all stick by me. And another man can have zero women. He ain't got to put in the work. He ain't a boss. He don't deserve the fruits because he didn't plant the seeds. Arari Amari writes, greetings, Saint. My message didn't go through the first time. Are the modern women lazy complainers still in the archives? Ah, yes. I'm glad you asked me that, Saint. That video about our uh, modern women lazy complainers, that video is exclusive on www.thesasn, so the Saturn, T-H-E-S-A-S-N.com, or patreon.com slash the Saint in the Center. It is up, and you can watch it there. Um. Any video live session that disappears from the public, it's probably going private for the people who really fuck with me, who really appreciate me, because there's no sense of me risking getting my channel banned for people who want to watch my content and never support in any way. Fables writes, heard this on Patreon first. So yes, he's attesting that video is currently live on patreon.com slash the saint and the center. Count Rios writes, if you pull out a concordance, Christianity doesn't exist. That's a very interesting thing Count Rios writes about. And if you all are keen students of history, Christianity and its many varieties, for example, uh, the Catholics, they signed something called the Reich Concordat, which was an agreement between the Catholic Church and the Nazi party. You hear me? They made an agreement essentially with the devil and you'll find that if you look historically, the Christian church, even in Italy, the Vatican, the Holy See made an agreement with the um, the fascists. And if I recall correctly, Mussolini and the fascists gave a land grant to the Catholic church, which still is being respected today. Correct me if I'm wrong. J. Maximus, again with the super chat, shout out. I think J. Maximus is leading the pack today, writes, would you ever consider getting into the construction business? Lots of politics and psychological warfare. Uh, I believe you excel in that field. I can navigate fields with landmines, but I would rather walk through beautiful pastures. I encourage the saints to take your talents where they are appreciated and go where the living is easy. So if you can make a hundred bucks toiling or you can make a hundred bucks just breathing out the pimping, do it where you can just breathe it out. Never look for struggle unnecessarily. Carrying on. Brother PDAT writes, brother, you just said something that inspired a meme. I'm going to quote you on it. I'll tag you on IG when it's done. Keep inspiring, encouraging, and edifying. Brother PDAT, I truly appreciate that saint. And shout out to all the saints whom I know already from real life. And shout out to the saints whom I've come to know through the assassin. If you follow our movement, you'll see saints who are on the council like Robert Jones, uh, like Jabrizi Magic, who have come to, to Vegas or live in Vegas. And we, we meet up, we fellowship, we politic, we, we go out to eat, we have good times. And, and that's what life is about. It's about true joy. And we have good friendships. You don't need to focus on chasing a bitch. Noir writes, greetings, saint. What are actionable steps to eradicate being a judgmental person? <laughs> Let me give you step number one. Before you speak judge, before you think judgment about someone else, first look at yourself and ask yourself, am I perfect? The Christians say... Let he who is without sin cast the first stone, which is to say with stoning being a punishment for criminals or stoning being a punishment for adulterers or those who have wronged, he who is without sin cast the first stone at this other person. So it's saying before you insult someone else, 
Look at yourself. Are you without, without sin? Me, myself, before I speak poorly of anyone else, if I think about myself first, I generally don't say anything because I am imperfect. And with that realization, I think that'll affect your lens. That's number one. Number two, when you're focused on your own goals and yourself, you don't have time to engage in irrelevant things and trivialities. The more goal focused you are, you realize that, hey, all this other stuff don't have nothing to do with me and what I'm focused on. So number one, before you speak on someone else, ask yourself, what could other people say about me if they're being critical? Before I talk about someone else's imperfections, what are my imperfections? That's number one. Strategy number two, or shall we say actionable step number two, is ask yourself, does this comment or thought have anything to do with my goals? Does it advance me at all? If it doesn't, shut the fuck up. So I think those are two good starting points. But the key is when you really strive to be saintly and be good and do good, you're not going to have that energy to you know cast stones at other people. Now, if it's a situation of defending yourself, you know, defend yourself with viciousness. But if it's just wanton, cruel comments, go ahead and skip that. Carrying on. Okay, I think we have hit all the super chats. We've made it to the bottom of them. Saints, if you have a super chat that I missed, please forgive me. It is the technology that does not allow me to scroll back up. I'm going to provide you... Um, about a minute to go ahead and type in super chat in all caps and type your question and I will answer it now. Emilio writes, you live by principle, you might die by principle. This is a thousand percent true. And in fact, you have a lot of cowards on the planet earth who would say, oh, let's all be nice. Let's play nice. Ah, well, Martin Luther King was a man of peace, nonviolence, still died by violence. The fact is there's no need to play nice or be be weak. No, play hard, play strong, stand on what you believe. Because even though Martin Luther King was a man of peace, he still died by violence. If you stand for anything, absolutely one of these cowards, weirdos are going to try to take you out. And when they come for you, hey, go with a smile because I'm going to go out talking shit. I could tell you when I was at Johns Hopkins Medical and I was playing basketball during my lunch break, I was talking crazy shit because, you know, I'm just, that's how LA cats are. You know? We like to talk shit when we hoop. So I'm, I'm playing hoop in Baltimore. I'm talking mad shit. And then the cat is backing me down and I'm in his ear. I was like, yeah, back that ass up, bitch. Back that ass up. Call me big daddy when you back that ass up. And he backed me up real hard. And you just hear a loud pop. It was my Achilles tendon snapping in half. My Achilles ripped in half. I fell down. And then I realized it was my Achilles. I'm still on the ground talking shit. Why? Because that's the kind of motherfucker I am. It's war all the way to the end. You dig? There's never any backing down. I didn't cry. I didn't whine. I'm talking shit. I'm like, hey, man, go hurry up and get a wheelchair. As soon as I get back, I'm going to kill your ass for this, man. You, you about to get it. I'm still talking because that's the kind of guy I am. I'm war from the bottom to the top. J. Maximus writes, peace from BK. I'm assuming he's talking about Brooklyn. Brooklyn, we go hard. He writes, hope to cross paths someday. Absolutely, we shall, I'm sure, because your boy is everywhere like nitrogen. Now, again, I'm going to give that minute. Anyone who had a super chat, they want their super chat acknowledged or their question answered, um, please feel free to type it back up because I do want to show love to those who show love to me. Band Video writes, going to become a member after this live stream. Thank you for the million dollars worth of game, Marquette. You are truly welcome. I appreciate your support and I appreciate you being a man of your word. Um, it is my sincere hope that when the saints hear something from me, you take it seriously and you utilize it for yourself to make yourself a greater man so that you may give more to others, especially to those you love. You can be good to good people. Larnell, okay, he might be winning the war because I think I think Jay Maximus had the highest number of super chats. Larnell is in the building. Right? Yeah, I'm surprised you're not the Baltimore brother, you got to be, yeah, I'm surprised you're not the Baltimore brother. You got to be a thorough dude be, to be here. Okay. I think he's basically saying that you got to be thorough to be in Baltimore and he is not lying. Look, quick story about Baltimore. I've been through many hoods and if you don't believe me, check my G file. I'm going to just name a couple hoods I've been through. 
I've been all through Oakland. I've hustled in Oakland. If you ever been through the Yay area, you know about San Pablo, East 14th International. You dig? I really got it out the mud out there. I done been through LA, every part of LA. You dig? We talking about Fig. We talking about the whole nine. Talk to me. I done been through hoods in San Diego. Some of y'all don't even know San Diego got hoods. You heard me? My people from Skyline. Check me out. Anyways, now, I've been through Chicago, used to live in the South Side. Believe that, real facts. I've been through Baltimore. We talking about over West, Pennsylvania Avenue, whatever you want to talk about. I lived in Philly, you heard me? When, when rappers is talking about Broad Street Bully and all that good stuff, yeah, I used to live there. Talk to me. Every hood you want to talk about, I didn't been through half of them. I didn't hustled in half of them. I didn't hustled in, in hoods outside of the country too. Yeah, buddy. When I'm about to die, Black Box version three of volume three, I'm going to go ahead and tell all the stories that will be past the statute of limitation. But let me tell you guys, if you think that I've ever said anything arrogant, if you knew what I've actually done in my real life, You'd be like, damn, this motherfucker humble. He only told us one third of what he's actually done. But anyways, when the man said you got to be really trill to be in Baltimore, he's not lying because I've been through every hood. I done been through hoods in the third world. I done been through hoods everywhere you want to talk about. Now, in Baltimore, the first place I saw a female with tattoo tears, bitch had two tears. I was like, damn, I was caught off guard. But then I saw like four or five more chicks with tattoo tears. The women are catching bodies. You hear me? Baltimore, they, they're the friend. Like, in my personal opinion, you walk through L.A. and you're not from that hood, people going to G-check you. They're going to be like, hey, where you from, blood? Hey, blood, where you from? They're going to see about you. You could walk through certain parts of Baltimore. People ain't going to just try to, like, get at you for no reason. They be on their stoop looking at you funny, but they ain't going to get at you for no reason unless it look like you're trying to put some product on their block. But. Let you fuck around and do some dumb shit or say some dumb shit. You would get cleaned up so quick in Baltimore. Hooey. You get cleaned up by a female or a male. It's not a game there. And if you ever watch The Wire, and I never say stuff like this, but that's one of the few instances that TV is highly accurate. I couldn't watch the whole, the whole Wire because when it got to the fourth season, it was just too real. Because I was living in Baltimore. I was like, this is really what's going on. And it was sad. It just hurt my heart to even watch it. So when Larnell says Baltimore is real deal, believe that. Absolutely believe that. Chutch. Don Stevens, right, showing tuition. Truly appreciate that, Saints. Um, Larnell writes, sorry about that. I was trying to get it in before the Super Chats ended. Goddamn the autocorrect. Hey, yeah, Baltimore, serious. And Baltimore people have such a strong culture, I kid you not. I know Baltimore like the back of my head. I was living in Puerto Rico. You heard me? I was in um in old San Juan, you know, just hanging out with a little female. And I was behind two people, a sister and a, and a brother. And they were talking and I could hear their accent. And I said, hey, you guys are from Baltimore, huh? And she turned around like, how you know that? I'm like, yo, like I know Baltimore when I hear Baltimore. You heard me? So uh, it, it's a very strong culture there. It's beautiful. Wester. Sends in the Canadian cat. Truly really appreciate it. Love from Marseille, France, in the building. Peace to the saints worldwide. You dig? David Nelms writes, any goal you want, you have to be on it even when you don't want to do it. He ain't never lied. This is factual. Legendary Vegan writes, a lot of black millionaires come out and live in the Maryland area. That's true. Um, we're talking about... Um, What's that spot? Um, I'm, it's slipping my mind right now. It's right by D.C., but it's a very, very uh, highly concentrated with black wealth. The name of it is escaping me right now. But yes, and Baltimore has a, a, some not a ton of black wealth. It has a lot of Jewish wealth for sure. Um, and it has some black wealth, but it's an overwhelmingly black city, like very high black population, especially when you're looking at uh, the concentrations within the city limits. Any, oh, yeah. Prince George's County. Thank you, Quan. Absolutely. PG County. A lot of wealthy uh, black folks there. Tyson's Corner. Yep. I'll be in the Ritz in Tyson's Corner. I go to a gala there every year. Anyways, Saints, I truly appreciate you being with me. Um, we're going to end this the way we always end this. Wherever you are, repeat this with full conviction, knowing that this is true of you. The Creed of the Assassin. I am going to be who I truly am because I am remarkable. 
And I'm going to strive every moment to show the greatest part of who I am. Saints, until next time. Peace.